want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It's been our text for the last four weeks. Now is the fifth week in this incredible series that I'm just enjoying and growing in. Think like Jesus. This is our fifth lesson. So let me read there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Say that with me. We have the mind of Christ. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Lord, thank you that your word brings revelation, and revelation brings transformation. And we thank you, Lord, that you're transforming us to understand uh, these incredible principles that you've laid out in your word. We give you thanks and praise, God, that, you, that we indeed have the mind of Christ. We can think your thoughts. We can have them. And we thank you, Lord, that we can respond appropriately in every life drama, in every situation, in every success, in every valley, every mountaintop. We have your thoughts. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. The rain, the blessing. You know, in the Old Testament, rain was a blessing. And it, it, whenever it rained, they thought it was the blessing of God. And so we do too. Amen. So we've learned some very important things about our topic, Think Like Jesus. We're sharpening our pencil, as it were, and learning more and getting an idea of our mind and our thoughts versus his thoughts and how we can merge, how we can pull those things together, reconcile, and pull our thoughts higher into um, the blessing of God and into uh, the favor of God and into the light of God. And so we learned, first of all, like Jesus, you have the indwelling Spirit of God to empower your thought life. You are not a victim of past memories and regrets and all of that, you have power to change your thought life to give God praise and to live out of that, that way of thinking, that same way and that same thought, uh, thoughts and thought life of Jesus. Why? Because the Spirit of God is dwelling in you. And secondly, we learned that like Jesus, you can view your life from the Father's perspective. Remember the baptism of Jesus. We talked about that. The, the heavens open. The Spirit of God came upon Jesus when he was baptized. And the Father's voice was heard. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And you as well. This is the same blessing. There's no difference. You are a child of God. Jesus, yes, he was the Son of God. But you are children. You and I are children of God. And the, the Bible teaches us that we have the same blessing that comes upon us. Heaven is open over me. Heaven is open over my life. The Spirit of God is empowering me, and the Father approves of me. This is my beloved child. I am well pleased. And sometimes we don't see ourselves that way, but you have to get out of that mindset. If you belong to Jesus, if you've been cleansed by his blood, if you have been filled with his Holy Spirit, the Lord sees you that way, that he approves of you, heaven is open, and he is empowering you. And then we learn, like Jesus, you too are blessed with the assurance the Father is working all things together for your good and his glory, right? So no matter what is happening in your life, God is going to turn it around for good. It doesn't matter if it's bad right now. God, if you will praise him, worship him, walk with him, think like Jesus through the problems and not let them get to you, depress you, beat you down, and cause you to give up, you're going to come out victorious, and God's going to reward you on the other end. Everybody say amen. This is how you think like Jesus. Jesus, when he was rejected by those around him, when he was spurned, when he was talked about, when he was lied about, he didn't give up on his mission, on his ministry, or the way he was supposed to think uh, about the Father. And, and how the Father thought about him. He pressed into those blessings, and so he fulfilled the will of God. 
And so like Jesus, you are blessed with the assurance that the Father is working all things together for your good and his glory. And then we learned last week uh, that you can think like Jesus concerning the lost. Many of us are consumed by our own life and and how we're going to make it you know, what's happening in our life. And those things are valid, obviously. You have to take care of business at home. You have to take care of business around you. But that is not at the exclusion of those in need or those whom Jesus wants us to reach. And so, like Jesus, you can think about the lost and seek them out to help them find their way to God. And this is, you know, you don't have to go out of your way to find lost people. Somebody say amen. They're all around you. So it's not like you have to go searching very far. And we learned about that. Jesus was on his way. Remember, he was just, he was just going uh, in his, uh, on his journey for that day. And he saw Zacchaeus up in the tree. Zacchaeus was a tax collector rejected by, and he was Jewish. He was collecting taxes for Rome. He was like a traitor among his brethren. He was rejected by people. But he had, he had changed. There were changes about him, and I talked about that last week. And Jesus said about Zacchaeus that, Uh, Today, salvation has come to your house, Zacchaeus. Come down out of the tree. He had climbed a tree to see Jesus because he was very short. And so he climbed a tree, and Jesus knew what was happening in his life. He paused. He called him down. And he looked at the people around him, Jesus did, as Zacchaeus is climbing down. And they're amazed. Why would Jesus go to be uh, a guest at this sinner's house, this sinner, you know, it's just like a, a real spurn and, and something uh, despised. He was very despised, Zacchaeus was. But Jesus said, salvation has come to this house because he also, he's, Jesus is speaking to people, he also is a son of Abraham. Every single human being that you pass on a regular basis every single day, they have been created in the image of God, and they deserve our attention if we, if we feel led, if we feel like we can, we can do it. But Jesus came, he says, for this is a son of Abraham, for the son of man, speaking of himself, has come to seek and to save the law. So this is thinking like Jesus. When you consider the lost, when you, and I encourage you last week, think about just as you start your week, Lord, is there anyone, show me this week who I can reach out to and just become a friend to, maybe somebody that I haven't noticed before that you want me to notice now. But today I want to turn your attention to one of my favorite scriptures, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I refer to it all the time in my own spirit, in my own life, because I know it's something that Jesus wants me to do and think about. And I want you to grab hold of it. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible that describes Jesus, his mindset, how he thought about things, and his ministry. So when you simplify it this way, Uh, And this verse simplifies things for me. How many know I'm a simple person? I know many of you are as well. Most of us are. And so Acts chapter 10, verse 38, this is what it says. I love that it's just right there planted in the middle of the book of Acts. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Somebody say amen. And so like Jesus, this is our fourth principle in our fifth lesson. Our fourth principle is this. Jesus thought about the sick. He thought about the oppressed. And they were all around him. They were everywhere. And so he sought to heal them. And so this was the life and the mindset of Christ. And it's just maybe not ours. And so we are to elevate our way of thinking 
because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to think this way. Now, I have a free will. I can reject that and continue in my own way of thinking and the way I try to solve problems and the way I want to live my life and, do, and be an independent person. Or I can be dependent upon the Holy Spirit to show me, to help me, to encourage me, to think like Jesus. And Jesus thought about not only the lost and the, the hurting, but the sick and the oppressed. Why? Because the devil is so active. The devil is so active. And God wants you and I to be active this way. He wants you and I, as we go through our life, as we go through our routine, maybe at work, maybe in the marketplace, wherever, at home, many times, it's your own family that are oppressed. Many times it could be your spouse that is oppressed or that needs healing. There was, a, there was a precious wife, Regina. Where are you, Regina? Stand up back there. Amen. Her husband just recently went through a, a, a terrible bout. I mean, he had a stroke. He was unconscious. He was in the hospital for weeks and weeks. And basically, the doctors didn't know what to do. But Regina began to pray and fast. Somebody say amen. She began to ask others to pray and believe for her husband to be healed. And they thought, you know, he'll never recover. Well, one Wednesday night, here comes Regina into the sanctuary with her precious husband. They sit back here. I said, what? And Regina stood up and gave a testimony. The Lord has healed my husband. To God be the glory. Somebody say amen. <laughs> amen. Come on up here. You want to say something, Regina? Bless your heart. You didn't know I was going to do that, did you? You were sitting back there. The Lord highlighted you. Say, tell, tell the story about Regina. Come on up here. God, bless welcome her to the platform. Hallelujah. Come on up, all the way up, because we have a live stream, and I want everybody to see you. I, I just want to give God the glory and the honor and thanksgiving. And, uh, oh, my God, it just, it's just my heart is overwhelmed. And... Uh, Okay, when people were saying you need to, you know, you need to, you have, do you have a funeral things and everything else? I, said, I don't accept that. And I told them, all I know is that God has no thoughts of defeat for us. And I said, Father, I might be crazy, but I do believe in every word you said. And it's impossible that this word will fail because he said, for I know my plans for you, plans for good and not of evil, plans to prosper you and to give you hope. And so what happened was my husband was in and out of the hospital since 2020, very sick. He has all dementia, is taking a lot of medications, like maybe 20 of them. And I just hold on to God and his promise. And I said, Father... I don't know what's going on, but you and me, we're together, and we're a majority, so it doesn't matter what they say. I just hold on to you, and so um, Gary was taken back to the hospital three months for three months, and he went through the dialysis, and the doctor told me, I'm not sure if this is, you know, lifetime, but... We'll do what we can. And so, and then I was praying for Gary every day. And there was a time when I felt like my prayers are bouncing to the wall. Mm -hmm. And then I felt it in my spirit. I said, God, are you listening to my prayers? And then the Holy Spirit told me, you need to pray and fast. And then I did it. And for seven days. And I was still going to school. And I just, you know. I was just taking oat milk because I can't do it with water. Mm. And then on the uh, on the seventh day, I had a conversation with the Lord. I was praying until 2 o'clock in the morning. I was interceding for him because I believe that the enemy wants to take him out. Yeah. That's what the Lord told me. And somebody needs to give. And I did. And on uh, and the seventh night, I asked, Lord, if you really heard my prayer, I want the confirmation. I want my husband to call me using his cell phone because Gary don't know how to use a cell phone anymore. <laughs> He's gone. Like, you know, Evelyn would say, this man is gone. Like, mm. you know. And then, okay, on the, sep on the next morning, he called me through his cell phone and he said, hey, honey, where's my, where's my wallet? 
where's my wallet, where's my keys? And they had, and then I was weeping on the other line. And he was so like, why are you weeping? You know, he doesn't even recall everything that had happened. And there's another, you know, uh, another good report. Gary was taking med dementia medication. He went back to the, um, to the neurologist mm -hmm. and she did um, a PET scan where, you know, they got this fluid from your uh, spinal cord. Mm -hmm. They did scan his brain and there were like, scars in there but it's healed the stroke Pretty and strong. then when the result came in plus the cognitive test the same doctor who said you know she asked dementia she said i don't know what you did but you don't have dementia wow and so she she took <laughs> him off the medication she said you don't need this medication for dementia you don't need it and you know to be honest with you his mind is crisp wow very crisp as sharp as like a knife and um <laughs> just you know just wednesday he started his job hallelujah come on oh give me a hug girl hey somebody amen thank you thank you, thank you. wow and by the way, we're going to begin on January 1st, our 21 days, fasting and prayer. So, you know, some things just don't happen. Jesus said, except you fast and pray. It's very important that we learn that principle, just like we learn, you know, and that's a hard principle. Uh, just like tithing could be hard and other things that we're c committed to. The Lord rewards that type of faith. Somebody say amen. So this was like a part of Regina's life. And so, you know, you are not helpless when it comes to seeing the oppressed set free. You are not powerless when it comes to seeing the sick healed. And the Lord wants you to know these things. Jesus thought about the sick and the oppressed around him. And he sought to bring his healing, the Father's healing to them. So this was part of G the ministry of Jesus. This is how he thought. This was, uh, he accepted this calling. And you too need to accept this calling to bring healing, the healing power of Jesus to others. To bring the good news that yes, they need to be saved. Absolutely. Somebody say amen. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. So this is the first point. He has anointed, he, he was anointed by God, the Father, with the Holy Spirit and power. The same Holy Spirit that was upon Jesus is upon you. The same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus is in you. That same anointing. And the anointing just simply means the covering and the approval of God that God is with you, that his spirit is upon you and in you. It's like oil that flows. It's a spiritual presence. You felt the, the presence of God today. In the Old Testament, they would anoint people like a king, like David was anointed by Samuel, with oil. Why? Because it represented the approval of God. It represented the power of the Holy Spirit that was now coming upon his life. The same anointing that was upon Jesus to destroy every yoke and every bondage of sickness lives and abides in you and is upon you. Jesus knew he was anointed by God the Father. If he, if he didn't know he was anointed, he would have not had the confidence to pray for the sick. If you don't feel you are anointed by God to pray for the sick, guess what? You're probably not going to pray for them. But if you are confident, and I want your confidence to emerge out of your life like a fire, a light from God, a power from on high. If, if you have confidence that you are anointed, you go into every situation knowing that God will answer and knowing that he will bring healing. And this is, this is something that you develop over time. It doesn't come 
you know, very easily. Why? Number one, the devil is just very active and tries to bring doubt. And your own, you know, your own way of thinking has to be overcome and your own weaknesses and securities and, and, and things that, that are, are kind of weighing on your mind have to be overcome as well. And so you can begin to think about your life as being clothed with the power of God, with the anointing of God. Did you know the Spirit of God? The Bible says that the anointing of God destroys every yoke. And this is just not for me. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you get to live free? Aren't you glad that you get to live free over sin and temptation? It doesn't mean that you're not going to mess up. It doesn't mean that you're not going to blow it. But you have power to ask God to forgive you, and he'll cleanse you by his blood. You'll walk in the light as he is in the light, and then you just get on with the business of God in your life. And you, you are clothed with the same resurrection power that Jesus had. The Father wants you to take your thought life to a whole new level. Quit thinking about your problems at work as unsolvable. Or quit thinking about people as real troublemakers at work and start praying for them. Start praying. Why? Because they too are created in the image of God. I know this is, this is like Pastor Randy. This is going to take more than the Holy Ghost is going to take God opening up cl the clouds and speaking to me. Well, he already has, and I'm doing it right now. He's doing it through me. So all you have to do is operate in that level of faith. The Father wants you to take your thought life to a whole new level when it comes to the sick, the suffering, the depressed. Did you know most people that are in a bad mood at work or at school or wherever, it's because they got problems that they can't hardly deal with, and they need answers. Did you know that? If you look at your own life, the reason why you walk around mully grubbing sometimes is because you have problems and you have yet to pray about them. And if you're praying, you're not praying in faith or whatever or resisting the devil. You got to resist the devil. You got to get him out of your life and out of your off of your back, out of your life and under your feet. Somebody say amen. So don't say this when it comes to the sick around you. Well, I don't feel anointed by God today to heal the sick. And I don't feel like I can, I can bring to bear what it's going to take to see them liberated and to see them set free. And see, this is, this is not the right mindset. Did you know that the Bible tells us that when, when we are weak, that's when he's strong. All it takes is faith. You, you have to operate in faith, not feelings. You operate in faith. You operate, you live your life out of obedience and faith, not feelings, not how strong you feel. The, some of the greatest miracles that I have seen at, that God has poured through my life upon others is when I feel the weakest, when I feel the most lack of anointing. This is when the greatest of miracles happens because the Lord wants us to know, hey, I'm really happy that you obeyed, but remember, it's always my power. It's always my strength. It's always my anointing. And so instead, every day or at least multiple times in a week when you're feeling kind of, um, you know, under the oppressive a hand of the enemy. You got to rebuke the devil, but then begin to say, I am anointed by the Holy Spirit. Say it with me. I am anointed by the Holy Spirit today to heal the sick and liberate the oppressed. Now, doesn't that feel good? Isn't that much better? Do you not sense the power of God on that? Yes, you do. See, when you begin to confess these things, when you begin to say these things, it's a measure of faith that you are saying them, you're declaring them by faith, you don't feel it, but you are saying to God, God, I'm looking for your strength now. I'm looking for your power. And see, if we have confidence that God is going to show up, excuse me, show up in our lives and answer our prayers, and we're anointed by God, then we're more likely to think about the sick. If I'm not confident, then I am less likely to think about the oppressed. So Jesus was anointed by God the Father with the Holy Spirit and with power. And so are you. 
To think like Jesus, you and I must declare the truth about ourselves. Jesus didn't walk around, well, I just don't know if I'm anointed today. You know, my disciples are arguing, they're trying, you know, I mean, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to deal with people today. I haven't, you know, he's, he, you know, if he needed time apart, he took time apart to get refreshed, right? He took his disciples time apart. So yes, you do need to get alone, as it were, in a desert place, alone, and pray. And that's what the 21 days is about every year. We do 21 days of fasting, of humility, of prayer, of getting alone with God. We're just getting his heart for the year. We're looking for what he's doing. And then, then we activate our lives throughout the year. Somebody say amen. Very symbolic, but very, very powerful. But he didn't say that. He, he spoke the truth. He lived in the truth. And the truth is God's word. Whatever God's word says about you, that's the truth. Not your feelings about yourself or not how you th see yourself. Well, you don't know what I went through, Pastor Andy. Well, there's no temptation taken you but such as common to man. Yes, I do, actually. I do know most of what you've gone through. Maybe I've gone through more. I don't know. Hardship, whatever. But it doesn't matter. We're cleansed by the blood. We're lifted into the heavenly places. And we are seated with Christ Jesus. We are empowered on the earth to fulfill his ministry and to do his work and to honor him and, and win the lost and see the sick healed. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Yes. So to think like Jesus, you and I must declare the truth about ourselves he was anointed by God the Father. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. So am I, period. No questions about it. Say it. Look, little Regina back there, bless her heart, her tears, her tears. Look at that. She saw a miracle from God. Dementia isn't corrected. A dementia in the medical world can never be reversed. But in God's kingdom, all things are possible to him who believes. When you refresh your mind this way, quit, quit getting down here and lift your mind to this. Lord, I'm anointed by you. What do I get to do for you today? Hallelujah. I'm anointed by the Holy Spirit today to heal the sick. Why not? Why not pray this way? Why not think this way about you? To liberate the oppressed. What happens when you do that? You bring the light of God into the darkness. You bring the love of God to others. You bring the pleasure of God to those around you and the power of God to them. There's a great story of, of this young man. Well, he wasn't a young man, but he was married. He, had, he, he was kind of middle-aged, but he had a brand new baby, a brand new wife. I didn't know him. His name was Myron. Some of you have heard this story. I'll never forget it. One of our members came to me, Pastor Randy, will you go visit Myron? I said, sure. So I scheduled to go. He had, he had cancer. His, his belly was out like this. They're basically giving him up to die. And I'm like, Lord, I have no anointing here. I have absolutely, I feel, I feel no anointing, but I know you're with me. Somebody said, correction, I don't feel it. And what I'm seeing is far greater than what I feel in my spirit. I do not have to feel a match to the mountain in front of me. All I have to do is know that God is with me and that God has anointed me. And so I just knelt by his bed, me and this member of our church. Uh, we prayed for him. And... You know, I began to sense something bubbling up, and I just kept speaking to the cancer, commanding it to die in his body. Six months later, four months later, don't know what happened. He shows up at our church over in the other building. He's walking in. I said, Myron. And he goes, Pastor Randy, I, I got to tell you everything that I went through. But his stomach was normal and the cancer was gone. Somebody say amen. He had no treatments. Only God did it. His faith. And, and he's still alive today, years and years later. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus thought about the sick. And he thought about the oppressed. He didn't have to go too far to find them. And he sought to bring the healing power of the Father to them. Number two, he took positive action with 
what God the Father had given him. And so if I know I'm anointed, I have to take positive action. Positive action toward what God is saying to me and, and how he wants me to live my life. This isn't just for the pastor. This is for every single one of you. Acts chapter 10, again, verse 38 says, He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. By who? The devil. The devil. Guess who's causing the problems? Guess who's causing the word curses to stick around in people's minds? Guess who's causing the, the generational curses of sickness and poverty and all of that? Guess who's causing all? The devil is causing. And you have authority over the devil. Somebody say amen. This is the same action you and I can take each day. As a follower of Christ, I intentionally, everybody say intentionality. Intentionality is a part of your life. It's always a part of your daily planner. I know that it's other things are on your daily planner, but put at the top of the page, I am anointed by God to bring healing to the sick and the oppressed. Hallelujah. How about that? And so, since the devil is intentional in his agenda to oppress, to bring sickness and disease to your loved ones, to your friends, to your work associates, you have to bring the light of God. You and I must bring the force of heaven and the healing power of Jesus to them. And then, then watch what God does. If you just step out in faith and pray for the sick, somebody say amen. My, my sister's, my, my wife's sister, Beverly, is, is going through a real battle. What is it that she has or that the devil's trying to put on her? Parkinson's disease. She's younger than my wife. And, um, you know, we're like, no, that is not going to be allowed here. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So remember Beverly, right? Remember her. And so at the Thanksgiving table, um, uh, my father-in-law and, and Kim's mom took a, the whole family. I don't know, there were what, like, I don't know how many, like 18, 16 people at to Golden Lamb. Oh, and I had the turkey and the dressing. It was delicious. Hallelujah. But I, they asked me to pray. And so I'm, I prayed for Beverly to be healed from head to toe, fingertip to fingertip, that the healing power of God. And I spent some time on that as well. And there were, you know, unbelievers, some unbelievers at the table, not many, obviously, but there's one that we're praying for, right? But listen, the prayer of faith, watch what God does with the prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith is a prayer of confidence in God that he will do what he says he will do. It doesn't matter if he does it right then or if he takes time and he does it later on. It doesn't matter. You and I are to pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says when we pray the prayer of faith, and we believe God to bring healing, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous will prevail. Somebody say amen. And so this is how God operates. It happens sometimes instantaneously, sometimes it doesn't. And so the devil and his oppression is no match. It may feel like it's overwhelming. He is overwhelming you. But it is no match the child for the child of God that has been anointed and empowered with the boldness and glory of Jesus. The Bible says, resist the devil. Wherever you find him. He, the devil is oppressing everyone. He's causing all the sickness and disease. He's causing it all. And so Jesus went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed. This was the mindset of Christ. This is how he did things. Every opportunity he took. Hallelujah. And he resisted the devil. Did you know Jesus, the Bible says, that he came to destroy all the works of darkness. Somebody say amen. So I have to identify darkness. I have to know what it is in order woo, to detonate that thing and blow it up. Somebody say amen. This applies to you. Resist the devil and he will do what? Flee from you. Just not from your life. Just not off your back and out of your family. But wherever you go. Somebody say amen. We are little evangelists. Look at your neighbor say, you're a little evangelist. Did you know that? 
You are a little evangelist. You are bringing the good news and the power of God. Jesus thought about the sick, and he sought to heal them. Jesus took positive action. Say it with me. Jesus took positive action. Always, at any moment, he did that. And this is how he thought. This was... Can you imagine the joy of Jesus? Can you imagine how happy he was when he's like seeing people rejoicing? Remember the ten lepers? He heals them as they go, and here comes one, and he's like, where are the nine? Where is, every, where is the other nine? And, and he turns to his disciples, and he says, where, what's happened? But that one came back and said, oh, and gave praise to God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the joy that's in, that was in Jesus can you imagine the joy in Regina's heart? Those are tears of joy, not sorrow. Somebody say amen. This is how it works. This is real Christianity 101. We have to take our thought life to a whole new level. Let me conclude here. Woo, I got so much to say. I told Dave last Sunday, I said, Dave, I could preach like 10 or 12 sermons on Think Like Jesus, at least. And so get ready. I don't know where this is going, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Hallelujah. Number three, and this is one of the great assurances that we have. He, Jesus, anchored himself in the promise that God the Father would always be with him. Somebody say amen. Anchoring yourself in that truth about who the Father is in your life is a, great, is a great boost to your daily life. See, it says, for God was with him. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Knowing the Father is with you wherever you go and with whomever you meet is an empowering thought. If I think, well, I didn't pray today, or, you know, I, I didn't do my devotions, I don't deserve for God. It's not about you deserving anything. Somebody say amen. It's about them getting the message that Jesus loves them and wants to heal them. So many struggle with that, though. Did you, have you noticed that in your life? I used, to, I used to live out of kind of like a works mentality. Well, if I pray four hours a day, for sure God's going to show up in power. But I've learned that it doesn't matter if I pray 24 hours a day, the Holy Spirit is going to show up in my life. Somebody say amen. Many people struggle. How can I pray for the sick today when I had to rush out of the house without doing my devotions? I don't feel like God is with me. Don't be, don't go negative. Somebody say amen. Don't go negative. Go positive. Speak the truth. The Father is with me. Period. The Father is with me. He will never leave me. He said that he would never leave me. He would hear my prayers. And if I walk in the cleansing power of Jesus, don't let sin disrupt or cut me off any length of time from the, the joy of the Lord, then he is going to do great things in my life. I can't just stay in sin, you know. Uh, God's grace can abound even where sin abounds. But I'm telling you, it's much better to go without the burden of sin in your life, and you'll see fantastic things. Daily devotions are wonderful. You should do those right. The Father is in favor of that. But the Father's promise to you regardless is that he will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. In the Greek, it's, a, it's like three nevers. I will never, no, never, ever leave you nor forsake you. Somebody say amen. That's a pretty good emphasis if you ask me. And so Satan's lie is, oh, you're unqualified. Oh, you know, you've prayed for the sick before and they haven't recovered. Well, have you followed up on those prayers? It took Myron six months to get back with me, and he just walks into our church one day. Somebody say amen. Jesus anchored himself in the promise that the Father would always be with him, and so must you and I because we want to elevate our way of thinking to the thoughts of Christ. I'm going to ask our worship team to come on up here while I'm concluding. Bringing the healing power of Jesus to the sick, to the sick and the oppressed was one of the wonderful things that inspired my life when I first started in ministry almost 40 years ago. When I got saved, even before I started in ministry, 
I felt like God wanted to use me to bring his healing power to others. And it was just not that I was in the ministry, but that I was a part of his ministry. It was, I was a part of being a part of his kingdom and a part of his family. We exist as a church. Did you know this? The reason why this church exists is not only to bring the gospel to people, but bring the healing ministry of Jesus to people. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so nothing does my heart more good than to see the people of Life Church and the members and attenders of Life Church seeing God heal those that they pray over. Somebody say amen. We had we have a healing rooms ministry here. Stand up, Bob and Carla. Oh, Bob, just you. Carla's gone. She had her own personal rapture. Her clothes are right there on the back of the chair. <laughs> She's out. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Did you know the Bible says in Mark 16, it says, verse 18, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Woo! I felt that one. When you lay your hands on people, it's an impartation of the Holy Spirit. And so when you lay your hands on them, the Spirit of God comes upon them. Say, Pastor Randy, I've prayed for people, and they've gone on to be with the Lord. Well, rejoice. Hallelujah. There, there is a time that that happens. But until then, we are going to pray for everybody that's sick and oppressed. We're not going to be discouraged. And the devil wants us to be discouraged. Why? when we pray for the sick and they go on to be with the Lord so that we don't pray for people anymore. But that's, if it, I'm telling you, if I lived my life that way, I would, I would never pray for another person again to be healed. But I, I'm not gonna go by my feelings. I have to go by my faith. And if I'm struggling because God didn't answer my prayer and they went on to be with the Lord, then you have to rebuke the devil I said, he's oppressing you, trying to keep you from praying for the sick. There's a story in the Bible. Bring those lights down, Manny. There's a great story in the Bible. This is so good. I want you to hear this before I close. There was a, a leading citizen of the island of Malta named Publius. How would you like to have that name? I'm so glad I don't have that name. But Publius, he was a leading man, a leading citizen at the island of Malta. And, and this is the island uh, that the Apostle Paul and others were stranded on. They were shipwrecked and en route to Rome. Word got around about Paul the Apostle, uh, Paul being there. Remember, uh, a snake came out and bit him, and everybody was watching to see if he falls over and dies because this was a very poisonous snake. And Paul didn't. And so what is this, they thought. And then, and then they, oh, surely the gods are going to uh, smite him when he was bitten. But then, oh, oh, he didn't die, so he must be a god. The, the confusion of the world, you can never allow the confusion of the world to keep you from operating in the power of God. But Publius heard about uh, Paul and this event. And the Bible says that Publius invited Paul as they were shipwrecked. They're waiting for another ship to go to Rome. And the Bible says that Publius received Paul and those who uh, were a part of the shipwreck and entertained them courteously for three days. And it happened, listen to this, that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went into him and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him. Now, Paul could have said, look, I've been shipwrecked. I'm a, I'm a little wore out here. We've been, we've been on the high seas for 14 days being driven. You know, nobody's believing me that we're, gonna, we're not going to perish and all of this. But no, Paul took time. You know, that was a powerfully discouraging moment for Paul. He's shipwrecked. Guess what? 
Not many of us would do very good in a situation like that. That's why we have to think like Jesus. Somebody, all things are working together for my good. Why am I on this island? Well, guess what happens? And so Paul laid hands on him. He, the father of Publius was healed. And so when this was done, all of a sudden word gets out all over the island. The rest of those on the island, it says, who had been diseased also came and God healed them. Somebody say amen. You never know. You got to keep your mind elevated into the thinking of Jesus. Jesus was living in Paul. Paul knew the principle that all things were working together for his good. This is very important for you and I today. For you and I to think like Jesus. All we need to do is think about the lost and how to reach them and watch God lead us to them. Think about the sick and watch how God opens doors. I don't want to be shipwrecked, you know. I don't want bad things to happen, but all things are working together for your good and his glory and it's an adventure somebody say man it's it's happening in your life right now don't let discouraging things keep you from praying for the people around you to be healed by the power of god stand with me let me give you some concluding thoughts here jesus anoint was anointed with power by the holy spirit and so are you jesus took positive action and went about doing good and healing others. And so can you. Jesus knew the Father was always with him wherever he encountered the sick or the hurting. And so you have that same assurance. I'll never forget in my first pastor years ago, I had a full head of hair then. Man, it was glorious. It was so awesome. Hallelujah. You're not even going to recognize me in heaven. I'm telling you right now. I had a hair like, remember Greg Brady and the Brady Bunch when he had that afro? That's, that's what my hair looked like. It was awesome. I had a fro, man. It was so cool. But the Lord knows how to humble us, right? But anyway, anyway, let me get back to the story. I remember there was a woman in, the, in our first pastor, and I was very young. We, all we had was a keyboard. We didn't have a full band. You know, I went to a church. Nobody wanted. I said, oh, yeah, I'll go. Hallelujah, me and my wife, you know, down in Price Hill. And, and we started preaching and teaching the Word of God. And one, one Sunday morning, a woman comes forward, had never seen her. And <clears throat> she came back the next week. And she got prayer. And I, I'll never forget the third time she came forward for prayer. I, I went down and I said, how can, what's happening? What's going on? Well, she had dysentery as well. And every time she ate something, she would just be attacked by this. And the doctor said, there's nothing we can do. She didn't have insurance. She couldn't afford, you know, hardly anything to, to make herself better. And I said, well, Jesus is going to heal you today. Hallelujah. And that just bubbled up out of my spirit. I said, let's pray right now. I laid my hands on her. I commanded the dysentery to leave her body, any infection, to go in Jesus' name. Now, she didn't feel anything. She went home. She ate a little bit because every time she ate something, the, the attack would happen. She couldn't keep anything down. This was months. This was, this was over a month of uh, this was weeks of this happening. She was growing very weak, but she called me. She, she said, Pastor Randy, yesterday I went home. I ate a little something. And there was no attack. Later in the day, I ate a little bit more. There was no attack. Hallelujah. The next day, I ate even more. Hallelujah. I gained my strength back, and there was no attack. Hallelujah. I said, well, praise God. Listen, you lay hands on the sick. You pray the prayer of faith you will see them healed. Make this declaration with me. Hallelujah. Say it after me. Heavenly Father, thank you that I am empowered to think like Jesus. That 
felt so good. Don't say that, but that just felt really good right then. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, repeat this after me. Thank you that I can shift my mindset from being self-focused to being more outward focused. I will pray for your leading in my life, your compassion, your love for the lost, for the sick, for the oppressed, for your power to manifest more and more in my thought life and in my prayer life for others. You are opening my eyes to see the harvest, to see the hurting around me. Thank you that I can think like Jesus does about the lost, about the sick, about the oppressed, and I will become more and more fruitful in my ministry unto God. In the mighty name, the strong name, the glorious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Come on.